I hate to lose. So as promised, I'm back at the International and I'm going to give this thing one more try. If you haven't seen part one of me trying to get this thing running, ran into a bunch of issues from broken tools, broken compression gauge, lost stuff, you name it, we ran into it. And I wasn't able to get this thing fired. Today is do or die. Come on along, it's gonna be fun. Last we left this thing, my compression gauge broke. So I couldn't get a good compression reading, so I've got a new one with me. The carburetor is completely shot, so I brought one of those with me. But the first thing I'm gonna do is do a compression test. This engine spins real easy, maybe too easy. See that? Um, so I'm thinking the compression is probably quite poor. The other risk is maybe the timing chain jumped. And I'm gonna check that, although I'm gonna wait, wait a little bit to do that. I am a little bit concerned about the validity of a compression test with the car being stuck shut. But I do have the valve, the throttle valve, pried open a bit. That happened by accident when I was trying to free it up. But worst case, if the readings don't make sense, I'm just gonna take the carb off because I brought one with me. In fact, I'm gonna do that anyway. So there's the bottom of the carb, just completely frozen. Nothing I tried could free it up. And I think that was a factor, but not the only reason that this thing wouldn't fire, because it wouldn't fire at all, it wouldn't sputter, wouldn't kick, wouldn't do anything. You can see how bad it is. All right, gauge is hooked up. Let's see what we got. This is number one cylinder. <laughs> okay, hold on, dirty connection. All right, let's try that again. We got a new connector. Let's see how this goes. Okay, starter issue. Okay, 30 pounds. Not so good. Not so good. It won't run off 30. Let's see if we do better with the other cylinders. Number two. got whoops about 40 before I hit the button time for a number three <laughs> okay we'll try that again that didn't work out too well That's nearly 60. Hey, it's still going up. Yeah, it's going in the right direction. It be because it's turning over more. Okay, this is number five. We've got about 35. Okay, now we've got number six. It's looking bleak, but let's see what we can get out of this one. Zero. 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 No. No. I'll recheck my gauge, but it was pulsing, so I think zero is accurate. I think the next step is I'm gonna pull a valve cover, take a look at what's going on in there. All right, valve cover's off, and we've got quite a bit of sludge in here. I'll show you just how deep it goes. You know, like right here. Let me show you. See that? It's pretty deep. And as far as the rockers go, well, this is interesting. What is this? What is that? Oh, a dirt, a dirt dauber nest. Huh, under the valve cover. It's a new one. They must have climbed through the oil fill vent. Yep, there's another one here. 
but that's that's not the problem this engine is probably just worn out so let's see what we have for valve movement when we crank the engine get this out of the way and let's see what we've got got good valve movement before I button this up one other thing I noticed is not all the push rods are spinning and they should be some are, some are. so usually that indicates a worn cam but we've got enough movement in these valves for this engine to start I don't think the problems in the valve train Next test is I've put some oil in number one cylinder. Sometimes when you do that, you can build some compression. I'm going to try it here. I don't have a lot of hope here. This thing, this one was around 20. Let's see if we get any more out of it. Well, we sure did. 55. 55. Yeah. We're going to get to give it a try on number three. This is the one that had 60 before. So let's see if we can get even more now that there's oil in the cylinder. Yep. We've got about 80, 82. It'll run off of that. All right, next check is to see if I can get spark at the plug by grounding it. This will test that I'm getting uh, ignition all the way through to the plug itself. I believe that I am because the spark checker does spark, but I want to try this anyway. Okay, we've got excellent spark here. Excellent. camera might not pick that up but it's fantastic spark so that eliminates all the ignition issues which is great news so really this is coming down to compression I'm gonna put my carb on it next discovered another issue check out this plug wire it's the only one like this there's not a connector on either end I'm sure it worked but it's terrible so that's been replaced. Now I've got my carburetor. This is from a Chevy 235, which will work just fine for our purposes, but I need to make a gasket. So I've got some gasket material here. This Felpro 3060 kit, and I'm just gonna cut out a gasket to the size that I need. That's gonna take a few minutes, so I'll get back to you. So I've traced the outline of the carb in the gasket material and I'm just going to cut it out and then cut the center hole and the two bolt holes. All right, so here's where we're at. I've got a carburetor on there. It's actually a Chevy carb from a 235, but it fits perfectly. I've got the fuel line hooked up, so we're good there. Jumping the ignition. Rather than worrying about the key, I'm just going to jump the coil. Change a bunch of the plug wires. There's oil in the cylinders. The plugs are clean. The oil's there to try to build a compression. It's not a lot of oil. You can't, you can't put too much. You get hydrostatic lock. But we've seen that it helps the compression. So we're going with that. And I think we're ready to go. I'm going to fill the bowl on the carb. And then we're going to give this a try. All right. We're going to try it. Ignition is on. It's my spray bottle. Where did I put my spray bottle? Prime the carb just a little. Let's see what happens. Not 
so great this blow by flying out of the valve cover that is not good at all that tells me that the rings are super worn which the lack of compression would verify i don't like to use ether but i'm going to try it just try it an additional kick because that's certainly what it needs Not good. We did get one plug to fire there. Okay. Not good so far. More troubleshooting. All right. So the theory I have with this is that we may have jumped a gear at some point in the past on the timing chain, jumped a tooth, because there's too much compression coming out through the valve cover, way too much. So what I'm gonna do is find top dead center and see if it lines up well with the timing marks. My thinking is it's not going to. I hope I'm wrong though, because it is firing a little bit. There's blue smoke coming out of the back and I can actually hear it. So at least it's firing a bit and we spin this faster it might start unless unless the timing shot so to identify top dead center i always use this it's called the tdc whistle yes you can put your finger over the hole and all that jazz but when you're working by yourself that's not too easy to do so you just thread this in and you turn the engine by hand till you hear this start to whistle that means the piston's coming up on the compression stroke when it stops you're at top dead center so you're probably going to hear it because I'm getting close already. You hear it? You work on a Mazda. He's going. You ever want to take him? He wants to be a Mazda down there. Okay, we're at top dead center. Let's see if the timing marks are aligned. So when we're at top dead center, we're pointing right at number one on the rotor. So it doesn't appear that this thing is jump time. Also, I have the valve cover off again, and both of these valves are up as they should be. So we're definitely on the compression stroke. So this is our intake valve right here and this should come up right before we start to hear the whistle so let's see if it does okay it's going down so air's coming in and the intake stroke it's coming up this one has not moved at all which it should not okay now we're up we're starting to build our compression belt slipping okay the belt slipping you see both of these are up as they should be and we're top dead center okay it out yet? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think we're good with top dead center. All right. Let's give this a whirl.
did hit one time there. Yeah. Yep. I don't know where you heard that or not. I did. How was the back looking? Was it smoking at all? Not uh, really. I didn't catch that. No. You ready? Hold on. Nope, no go. So I tried the 24 volts a couple more times and it didn't work. The starter was just overheating and the engine was turning slower and slower. And at this point it was pretty clear to me that the engine wasn't going to run. On top of that, it started pouring rain again. So I, I gave it up. I hate to do that, but I gave it up. But what did we learn from all this? Well, we verified that fuel was not the issue. The different carb had no effect, and I didn't think that was, but we ruled it out. We verified that spark, good spark, was getting all the way to the plugs, so that wasn't an issue. We verified that the timing was right, so that wasn't an issue. The four things we need for a truck to run an engine, we had air, fuel, spark, timing, should run, right? But we're missing one more. We're missing compression. The compression in the engine was just too low to get the fuel to compress enough to fire. So you can have those four things and the engine still won't run. So make it five, really, things you need in order to run. I gave this truck my best shot. It's not gonna run. Uh, I even tried putting oil in the cylinders to raise the compression, which it did, but still it was under 60. It's just not going to run like that in most cases. Spinning it really fast sometimes bails you out in this situation uh, and builds enough compression to fire, not even in this case. That International was no doubt parked because the engine was completely worn out. I hope you enjoyed this all this video. It, it was great for me to go back and really put some, some questions to rest that I had about why this thing didn't run. Please subscribe if you haven't. The second channel has a lot of different stuff on it from just plain will it run videos. And I think you'll find the content enjoying. I'm gonna enjoyable. I'm gonna be putting more focus into this channel going forward. So you see more content on it of varying things. Again, thank you for watching. Have a great day.